joined now by Rebecca O'Connor, who's head of pensions and savings at Interactive Investor. Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us. Now, um, I want to ask you, first of all, because people talk a lot about this triple lock and not fully understanding uh, what it means and what impact it could have had if that, it was still in, in effect, because I know it takes effect uh, next year. Would that have been helpful? And if you could just tell people what that is. Yeah, it, it would have been helpful if it had been in place this year. And the reason the government decided to scrap it for one year was that it would have led to a, a strong rise this year that the government felt was disproportionate at the time it had to set the state pension triple lock. So what the triple lock is, is a, a rise in the state pension that is either in line with annual earnings um, or 2.5 percent or inflation, um, and uh, whichever is the higher. And last year, the earnings post-pandemic, if you remember, um, were, were sky high, like over 8%. So that would have resulted in a significant rise in the state pension this year. Now, back at the end of last year, that seemed unreasonable because we hadn't seen this huge rise in inflation that we are now at the very beginning of, actually. Um, and so the government decided to scrap the triple lock, introduce a double lock for one year, and that meant that the state pension this year is rising by 3.1%. Now, of course, that now looks very mean in comparison with the huge price rises that we're now seeing. The original amount would actually have been much better, uh, but the government had already made all of those changes and so couldn't posthumously then change it back to over 8% for this year. It has been reinstated from next April. So it, whatever the September inflation figure is this year is going to determine what the state pension rise is next year but that's no good for now so for this for this year from this april now to next april pensioners are getting far less than the rise in prices right so this is this is worrying so it's not so if they tighten their purse it's not going to quite work out they'll actually have to cut things out as jackie was talking about uh, cutting out well, things. Is, in, yeah, like you know, pensioners, are, they don't have any income coming in. They no. don't have any earnings. They can't magic money. They can't side hustle the way out of this. They, so what could the government have, do then to help them? What, what, what would be good? Well, um, so there is, there is help available. So um, there is now the government announced last week with the spring statement, this extra support fund, uh, whether or not that's going to be enough to help people is another matter. It's being distributed by local councils. If you feel you are in need of help and could be eligible for that support fund, um, the idea is that you could get that from your local council. Um, so that's one form of help. Another is pension credit. So not enough people who are eligible for pension credit actually claim it. It's available to all pensioners who are on a low income. and You can be in receipt of some state pension and still be eligible for pension credit. So if you're not sure if you're eligible, but you are on a low income, I would suggest finding out um, because it can top up your income. Um, oh, okay. You may be entitled to other benefits and discounts. And uh, I mean, it sounds like from you know what Jackie was saying, she's well aware of all the discounts and things that she could be eligible for and is claiming them. Um, but for people that aren't, it's something to look into now, I would say.